Your Massachusetts real estate market update for October 10th, 2022. I don't know where this year has gone, but in this video, we're going to talk about single family and condo data as we always do for the last week. But we're also going to take a look at multifamily data for the month of September, see what's going on in the multifamily market. Uh, interest rates, <laughs> we're going to call a spade a spade. Nobody has any idea what the heck's going on, where they're headed, what's going to happen next. I mean, talk about a market that just keeps you guessing. Uh, well, <laughs> If people out there that think the housing market is going to go down 20, 30, 40, 50% um, in the next couple of years, well, there's an interesting development out there that you should definitely be aware of as you make that prediction. And then we're going to take a look at the new hottest condo, most expensive condo in Massachusetts that just came on the market today for $38 million. Hey, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold over a thousand homes. Uh, if you have any questions, then reach out to me. Know that I'm always gonna be your resource. So let's jump over into the single family market. There are currently 5,435 single family homes currently on the market. So it looks like last week's inventory decrease was just an outlier as inventory has gone up over that amount. Keep in mind that this time last year, we were seeing inventory really draw down, which is not what we're seeing this year. So for each week that inventory either stays level or increases, we actually see the year over year inventory gains continue to go up. So when we look at the same week this time last year and compare it to this week, we actually have 725 more single family homes that are currently on the market today than we did last year. So jumping over to newly listed properties, there were 960 new listings that came on the market this week. Now the average amount of new listings in August and September was 1,087 units. So this would be about a 12% below average for the newly listed properties that came on the market. In the under agreements, we had 930 uh, single family homes that went under agreement during the week um, of October 3rd. The four week rolling average was 1,042 units. So this is is about 11% below that average. We had 546 single family homes closed last week for an average sales price of $662,000 and a median sales price of $535,000. Now this 546 units that closed was kind of surprising. This was a really low number, which is ultimately something that I really need to keep our eyes on because ultimately we knew that sales data, right? pending data in the beginning of September was lower and this is those pendings turning into sales. But this is a trend we really need to keep our eye on because to put it in perspective, this same week last year we had 728 sales uh, happen so that's a 25 percent decrease in the amount of single family homes that closed last week so like i said it's just something that we're going to keep our eye on and then months of inventory months of inventory is that gauge of how hot the market is this actually ticked down to 1.38 months this week versus last week's 1.4 months but as i've said in the past i truly believe that this lagging data indicator number does not really take into effect what we have seen in the market but there's no doubt about it the single family market is much stronger than the condo market, which we're going to talk about momentarily. But first, don't be that guy. Hit subscribe. There were 2,789 condos currently on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now, funny thing here, for the last two weeks, there's been a one unit gain week over week for both those weeks. Just kind of a funny thing to point out. There were 386 newly listed condos that came on the market in the state of Massachusetts last week. Now, when we look at the average for both uh, August as well as September, the average amount of new listings were 457 new condos coming on the market each week. So this ultimately means that we're 16% below in new listings when we look at that kind of baseline average week over week average right in the under agreements we had 370 condos go under agreement now again the average for august and september was 399 units which means that we were a little like 7.2 percent below where we were kind of that baseline average yet again and then for properties that have closed there were 176 condos that sold last week for an average sales price of six hundred and twenty one thousand dollars and a median sales price of four hundred and fifty thousand dollars but we need to jump back to that 176 condos sold. I mean, I almost fell off my seat when I saw that number. I, there's no rhyme or reason that I have for why condo sales were so low last week. But when I say this is something that we really need to keep our eye on, we really need to keep our eye on. Because as I've said before, the condo market is a lot more of a fragile market than compared to that single family market. So if these lower sales trends continue, then we might just see that inventory start increasing or sales numbers even further going down. And that will definitely swing that pendulum over into that buyer's market very, very, very quickly. 
Then there's that months of inventory where months of inventory actually retreated a little bit to 2.03 months, and this is compared to last week's 2.06 months. Now look, once that 176 unit closings go into effect and is in the data for next week numbers, I know that that's gonna snap up. Okay, it's gonna go into the twos, but really the big thing is when we take a look at the last two months of data rather than using the last four months, is what, which is what you're supposed to do, to, to really use, you're, you're ultimately gonna see a much higher months of inventory number here. So even though it looks really pretty at two months, that is not the true condition of the condo market in the state of Massachusetts. We're really, really, really close to that buyer's market to equal market. In other words, buyers, if you're out there and you're looking for a condo, you know, ultimately you just look a little bit harder and you're going to might be able to find a really, really, really good value um, with a seller that needs to sell. I mean, for buyers, by far, the condo market is the best market to be buying in where you can get the uh, best value for a house, if you will. And by the way, speaking of buyers, there is an absolutely amazing first-time home buyer program out there. I mean, it's unbelievable. That gives you $50,000 in grants that can be used to either down payment or uh, closing costs. I mean, it is an unbelievable program for first-time home buyers that are eligible for this program. Uh, I did a video on it that I'm going to have at the end of this video, but it's definitely worth talking, like taking a look at it if you're a first-time home buyer. I mean, it's fifty thousand dollars in free money. But let's just jump over to that multifamily market. So in the multifamily market, there are 1,128 multifamilies currently on the market. Now, what's been really interesting is the inventory has been really level in the multifamily market for the last month or two. Um, you know, it's been a very stable market is really what to say. There were 632 multifamily homes that sold in September for an average sales price of $782,000 and a median sales price of $625,000. Now, this is compared to the 835 multifamily homes that we saw, and saw sold in September of 2021 with an average sales price of $703,000 and a median sales price of $545,000. So ultimately this means that sales year over year for the month of September in the multifamily market were down by 24%. Meanwhile, prices were up by 3.6%. And I gotta say, I give the multifamily market a lot of credit here because they've remained really resilient. If I was gonna guess at one of the first markets that were gonna be really impacted by the increase of uh, the interest rates, it was gonna be the multifamily market because as the interest rates go up and up and up, right, it makes these investments a little less attractive for these investors, right? The, the rate of return isn't nearly as good. Um, but investors are still out there and they're still buying, you know, these things up uh, quite a bit. And, and ultimately, if, if you're a first time home buyer or even a second time home buyer, right, you know, the multifamily market in the next coming months might be a really great place to look where you can maybe get one of these first time home buyer uh, incentive programs where it's up to $50,000 in free money, right? And if you buy a multifamily helping use that, well, you might just have some income from, you know, a paying tenant in order to help pay down your mortgage. That's what I did for my first house when I bought a house, by the way, and it worked out pretty well. So on to the mortgage market. So the relief that we saw for interest rates last week completely wiped away. I mean, by the end of the week, the interest rates have gone up and up and up and they've continued to go up this week. And really the big reason why is because of uncertainty. Nobody at this point has any idea what is going on. So therefore, the markets are gonna just remain volatile. I mean, you see the, the, the stock market, it's up one day and then it's way down the next day and then up, way up, right? I mean, it's up and down, left and right. And, and that's because nobody has a good grasp in regards to what is going on. And for as long as this remains, well, that's we're going to continue to see this volatility. So if you will, the new normal is volatility, unfortunately. So just be expected that one day interest rates could be here and then the next day they could be way up and then the day after they could be way down. So yeah, locking in an interest rate today could make a big difference in regards to your affordability tomorrow. So in regards to, hey, questions coming up, I mean, we have the consumer price index this week. That's going to be some telling and from news that could make the market swing one way or the other. But the big the other thing is, is we have a couple Fed presidents that have uh, kind of hit the speaking circuit, if you will. They're going to be out there talking and, you know, some of their comments can swing a market one way or swing a market the other way really quickly. And it's important to note, I'm, I forget what Fed president it was, but just last week he was talking about the, the fear of overcorrecting in this marketplace, which I think is a pretty relevant fear personally. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what a bunch of these other Fed presidents are out there saying, which might give us a little bit of a better guess and, and look outlook of, of what the, the next 
Fed move is going to be, or maybe we know what's going to happen this one, but maybe the next couple down the road, right? Because we're, we're hoping that they are going to slow down as we hope that inflation is starting to be tamed. So what could be the reason that housing prices won't tumble like so many people are hoping and praying for? Which, by the way, I just got to reiterate that housing prices went down about 18% in the last housing correction back in 2008, which caused a pretty bad economy and a pretty bad situation for a lot of people. So for those hoping that they're going to get down 30, 40, 50%, keep in mind what a doubling of that would do is housing relates to 15 to 18% of our total gross domestic product. I mean, you're talking about a depression like we've never seen. So just to put that in perspective, yet again, just wanted to take a second in order to say that. So what are we talking about here? So let's go first back in 2008, where we ultimately see towards the end of that crisis. Banks, yes, they were selling foreclosures on the open market, but they really slowed down to the amount of foreclosures that were being released to folks like you and me. It was the big money that could step in by 100, 200, these packages of 100, 200, 1,000 units at one time. Just buy them all, take them off the books. Banks absolutely loved it because they got a huge, huge amount of liabilities off their books really quick. They got capital that they could redeploy. I mean, it was great for banks. And that is what a lot of banks have been doing when they do get foreclosures. Rather than them dwindling down, coming to us and to the open market where you see a for sale sign on it. No, 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 no. What has happened is, is the big money has stepped in and they've been buying these things in bulk. So yeah, when you think about 2008, who was it the, really the guy that made out? It wasn't you and me. It wasn't the small investors. No, no, no. So surprise, surprise, it was the big guys. And that is what you'll most likely see as we see things roll out in these southern parts of the country. Because I have said it before, and I continue to say, where you're going to see housing weakness is in the southern part of the country, uh, specifically, you know, the southwest, I'm all well, the southeast, just the whole southern part of the country, where they have seen mass amounts of building. Um, which is, again, what you haven't seen here in the state of Massachusetts. So you ultimately see these builders who are in the middle of building out these developments, have tons of these spec homes, and now are sitting on a ton of inventory. So in the past, what have they had to do? They've had to decrease prices and decrease prices. But now look at what they're doing. They're, they're taking a note straight from the bank's books here, if you will, and they're going straight to the big investor, and they're offloading these huge developments to these investors who can take down these whole things. And they're happy to sell them at a discount, Take that money, go lick their wounds somewhere else and be ready for that next project ultimately when the market starts to return or it's recast to, you know, what the current market expectations is. So if we don't see these huge amounts of inventory come on the market from the investor side, which we have talked about before from the developer side, I should say then ultimately that means in a lot of these markets, we might not necessarily see that huge decrease that we had expected. And that's a really, I, I, I mean, it's a huge, huge, huge development um, in, in the sense of if markets will crash, because these guys will just hold on to the houses. They're buying them at a great discount. They'll hold on to the houses and then they'll wait for five years when the market is just back and, and strong again, because here's the thing that they realize, and here's the thing that you really need to realize as well. When you take a look at the US housing market, from a macroeconomic standpoint, the U.S. housing market is actually in a shortage for the amount of houses that it has been creating for our population. That's right. It's in a shortage. So right now it might be a little bit of a slowdown. But when you look at the true, true macroeconomic development of our marketplace for housing in, this, in the whole entire country, in the United States, we're at a shortage. We're not building enough houses in order to keep up with our population growth. So at some point, yeah, this slowdown is going to end and then you're most likely going to see a huge snap in the other way. Um, and ultimately, if these developers turn to the big money and just sell these huge developments to them, then again, that means, you know, investors like you and I would never have that opportunity. But it also creates a floor for pricing that, Ultimately, again, you and I and the regular marketplace just will never see those low, low, low prices.
So back to the fun segment. Let's take a look at the most expensive condo in the state of Masters just listed today. It was listed at one Dalton in the Back Bay, which is a Four Seasons building. Really, really, really nice building. It was just finished in about 2020. Um, the building has 160 ultra high-end condos with some of the finest amenities one could ask for. Uh, it's actually got an exclusive lobby with doorman and concierge services specifically for the residents, but this is really cool. It has its own owner's only restaurant on the 50th floor floor, which I don't know. For some reason, I thought that was really cool. Now, people that are residences of the Four Seasons can also utilize the five-star services that the Four Seasons offers from spas to the restaurants to the swimming pool, whatever the Four Seasons guests can use, the residents can as well. Now, this actual unit uh, is actually a combination of two units on the 58th floor. It's five bedrooms, six full baths, and two half baths, which again, somebody needs to explain to me, if you have five bedrooms, why do you need six full baths? I still don't get it. But the unit actually wraps around our two corners of one Dalton, so you get some unbelievable views of our awesome city uh, but long story short the condo has pretty much every single luxury that someone could ever imagine possible and would make them happy with the exception of private outdoor space this home is being listed for 38 million dollars I put a description, a link in the description below. Take a look. It is absolutely stunning. Um, if you have any questions or comments about any of this market data, anything I talked about today, then drop those in the section below. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Then find my information in, in the description below. I love talking real estate. Would love to talk about your goals and you know ultimately find out what you're looking to accomplish. Uh, keep in mind, I do limit the amount of people that I work with. Uh, but here's my promise for you. If I can't help you, I'm always going to point you in the right direction for somebody that can do a better job than me. And can you please do me a huge favor? If you know of anybody who's thinking about buying or selling a house, uh, then can you please send them this video? I always believe that in informed person is a powerful person. And by the way, don't be that guy. Hit subscribe. Until next time.